Hello and welcome to Strip Battle Naked, I'm Hass and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. You only need to watch one or two kung fu movies where a big crowd of people attack the main hero to realise how they work. Because it mostly just works the same way. If you've got 20 people who want to beat up your hero, you can't really have them all attack at once, otherwise the hero would genuinely be swamped, they get your hero and you know, film's over pretty quick. Sometimes that does happen, it's a way of bringing down the hero in the middle of the story, say, but when you need your hero or heroes to be fully successful, what happens instead is to create the illusion that all the baddies are attacking him or her at once, but actually have them do it one at a time. Happens to Jackie Chan all the time, Jet Li, whoever. They meet a swarm of people, but end up actually fighting one at a time until they've whittled the numbers down. But by having it be relentless, and by having each person come immediately after the next, it kind of creates a sense of an onslaught of villains. And the same applies to big epic superhero fights in comics too. I've got a handful of examples of this, and the first is from the Ultimates. This one is a little different in that it's reversed though. Instead of having a single hero and a bunch of bad guys, you've got one big bad guy, the Hulk, and a bunch of heroes. And we'll see this similar in a sec as well with Justice League, but they're attempting to stop Hulk from destroying Manhattan. But what this means is individually attacking him in sequence. First Giant Man has a go, and then Iron Man takes over, either making a nod towards that with this panel, then it moves to the Wasp, and eventually Captain America, so on so on. And the genius of this is how it's woven fundamentally into the story as to make a point about why they don't all just attack him at once to contain him. Nick Fury is running a plan from behind the scenes that has a progression as Hulk moves his way through the heroes. Almost like a video game where you work your way through the various bosses or levels to get to the big fight at the end. Like the Kung Fu examples at the start, it creates an impression of Hulk fighting this swarm of the team by never letting up. As soon as he's done with one of the cast, the other takes over immediately within the same page. Iron Man flies in at the bottom of the last page with Giant Man here, Wasp enters at the bottom of the last page with Iron Man. You know, it establishes the next fight and the next scene before the other one even really feels like it's over, before the page turn. So by doing that, the pace stays up and it stays relentless and we get the impression that it's never ending, even though actually Hulk is only really dealing with one person at a time. If we jump back to Uncanny X-Men 137, where the X-Men fight the Shi'ar Empire, you've got a bunch of heroes against a bunch of villains, and we see exactly the same thing. Colossus here attacks first, then Beast gets attacked, while Storm and Wolverine are thrown somewhere new. Breaking up the heroes allows them to be swarmed, but even when swarmed, the attacks only come one at a time. Again, Claremont, who's writing this, is aware of what he's doing with the fight and is linking the separation of the heroes into the story, which is a really good way of doing it. The Empire is trying to split up the X-Men to make it easier to take them down, but it also helps in the balance of threat and heroism in the story. Still, though, we see the same approach to one-on-one -on -one fighting that we saw in the Ultimates. For example, here's Storm. She attacks Earthquake on the left, and a panel later, she's now engaged with Hussar. Then it switches back to Earthquake, one-on-one, -on -one, even though the villains are stood right there. When we get back to Colossus, he's finishing off his enemy, while Gladiator literally stands there watching him, contemplating how well Colossus and the X-Men are doing. I mean, you could jump in, I guess. And he does do it a page later to fight Colossus, but you can see the underpinning approach to all that is that the heroes only fight one-on-one. -on -one. There isn't really much of an explanation given as to why, though. It's just done because otherwise the heroes would have to lose, or the villains, who you ideally want to represent a real threat, would be thwarted, you know, 3-on-1, 4-on-1, 5-on-1, which would make them look really, really weak. So we're essentially being tricked into thinking that the heroes are being swarmed without ever making the real villains look too weak or underpowered. And the final example of this, which I think is a really, really strong one, is Identity Crisis number 3, and it's got Deathstroke taking out the Justice League. So Deathstroke in this example takes the place of the single figure fighting a series of enemies, and again, it comes one at a time. And, once again, Meltzer has worked it into his narrative. Deathstroke is so quick and he's using such a large amount of his brain power that he's super aware of everything that's happening around him. Here it's not so much that the Justice League come one at a time, even though technically that is the case, it's more that Deathstroke is so quick that they can't come faster. So he starts with Zatanna, and then Hawkman, then Green Arrow, and you can see how at no point is anyone at all coming close to fighting him two on one. Characters are literally standing around, just watching their friends have a go and lose. This scene creates a sense of chaos though, but actually you can see the very specific order being applied to it. And it helps with the pace. As each moment has that one action to look at, you're not being overwhelmed with story in each of the panels, but the brisk pace creates the sensation of characters being overwhelmed. However, Meltzer changes it in Identity Crisis, and soon has all the heroes all attacking at once. This works because it's flipped and actually Deathstroke is the villain, so when we see him become truly overwhelmed by all the attackers, we're happy because he's the baddie and they're taking him down. But this is what fight scenes would look like if they all played out like this. 
and it is a mess. You have to look everywhere. In each panel, there's so much going on and it's difficult to keep the pace moving quicker when you have to have a look at five different things in every single panel. It slows the fight right down. Which is important in this context and in this moment. However, if you imagine this as seen earlier when Deathstroke's taken them all out, it would be a bit of a slog. As an example of that, Next Wave 11 has one of my favourite moments in superhero comic fights, and it's a series of six double splash pages that show the Next Wave agents fighting a bunch of villains all at once. The pace just disappears, because each page has a whole bunch of things to look at and dive into, but here Ellis and Amonan are using it more as a joke and a big fun moment in their book, more so than specifically to show any heroes getting swarmed or swamped by any fight. So in these moments, the creators are approaching them as big fight scenes, but they're tying them to a very specific story so they can get away with the approach to choreographing the fight by having them all essentially be one-on-one -on -one and not allowing us to ask questions. Moving quickly through the moments keeps the pacing up and means we're not seeing people standing around asking whose turn is it next and having the action be a constant means it feels like it's overwhelming. And importantly, that's all it has to do. It doesn't have to necessarily truly be overwhelming if you do what we're doing here and kind of deep dive into it. It just has to feel like it when you're reading the book. That's all that matters. And you can see it's a balancing act between believability, which is important, but also pace, which is important. Honesty and appearance and action and power. If done right, your audience will not even notice that this doesn't feel like a real scrappy fight. They might not notice that the villains are just standing around waiting for their go, but that their hero is really being overwhelmed by this mass of villains and just about managing to keep them all at bay. When it works, it's the perfect blend of action and story and character and danger. Thanks for watching. This episode was, as always, made possible by the patrons at patreon.com slash strip panel naked. For their support, they get brand new exclusive content every week from me too, so check it out if you'd like to support the channel and see some new writing. You can get my comics magazine at panelxpanel.com, and I'm on Twitter at HassanOE. Finally, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.